Hey everyone, happy, uh, what day is it? Hey, have you found since you've been held to a shelter in place order that you're having a hard time remembering exactly what day it is? Is it just me? I kid you not, this entire week, I thought every single day was Thursday. And now today, I think today's Sunday. I don't know if I'm losing my mind or, or what's going on. I have to constantly look at my watch. I'm constantly looking at a calendar, trying to figure out what day it is, what the heck's going on today. I've kind of lost all track of time, and this uh, probably because some of my activities have been cut down. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. Get on, dog. Come over here, buddy. Come on up here, man. This old guy right here and the rest of our dogs, oh, they haven't lost a bit of time. Not one bit. They could care less. Every single day, Captain gets up at the same time. He expects to be fed at the exact same time. And I kid you not, 8.30 at night, you can set your watch by it. You can literally set your watch by it. 8.30 at night, Captain is headed down the stairs, or if we happen to be upstairs, no matter where we are, Captain is off to his bed. And again, set a watch to it. So I was wondering, you know, how do animals do this? How are they always able to tell exactly what time it is, no matter when it is? How can they do that? Well, you know, we have to think, first of all, life evolved under cyclic conditions. It really did. And the ecological conditions in which animals found themselves differed tremendously during uh, different cycles. Uh, so that all being said, it became very adaptive for these animals to be able to predict upcoming events. Like for example, hey, it's about to get dark out here. Or B, I think winter is about to set upon us. And it was just much better to be able to predict those and do something about it rather than simply just responding to the conditions when they occurred. So that became an adaptive response. And when that happened, good old mother nature, she did her thing as well. She created what's known as a suprachiomatic nucleus. This is a little nuclei right up here in the old hypothalamus of your brain. And we call that thing the master clock because we found out that animals don't just have biological, have a biological clock, a clock. They have multiple clocks. So do we. But they're all run off of that superchimatic uh, nucleus, the master clock of all time. And it kind of just controls all those other clocks. And this clock that's inside of us, this internal clock that's always running, always going, always spinning, no matter what the environment is, no matter what changes occur, it is incredibly accurate. And for any clock to be useful, it has to be precise. And it's exactly that in animals. For years and years, they've done studies on hamsters, they've done studies on lab rats, uh, flying squirrels even. And they kept them in laboratory conditions under a, no changes in their environment, none whatsoever. The light was the same, temperature was the same, everything was the exact same. And yet these animals, their activity levels and their sleep levels all stayed the same. Literally within minutes, after days, weeks, months, and even years, it just never changed. Now, what did occur though, is when they let these animals out of the laboratory and they turned on lights or turned off lights, whatever have you, their suprachiomatic uh, nucleus adjusted. It hit like a reset button. And that's all due to the uh, photochromatic type sensors that we have in our eyes, photoreceptors back here, that then talk to the, the SCN, uh, the suprachiomatic uh, nucleus, and then tell it to, hey, let's go ahead and switch gears here just a little bit. Uh, it's kind of getting dark, so for us wolves, uh, with us having more rods in our eyes than cones, it's a great time to go hunting because the animals that we hunt typically come out at night to hide from us. Same thing with dusk, another good time to go hunting. Hence why our dogs have bio, uh, bio rhythms that kind of match that. They're really active early in the morning, active uh, again in the evening time, but not late at night time. So all these things happened. Uh, you know, it's a, even with humans, we have clocks ourselves. That's why we suffer from jet lag. It's why if your most heart attacks and strokes occur between 6 a.m and noon. Now I definitely think that's an adaptive response to having teenagers. That's why teenagers who can cause us to have a heart attack or stroke, they don't get up until afternoon. So we are more from a physiological standpoint, more equipped to deal with what they do in the afternoon than what we are in the morning to, to noon. Also, if you have 
asthma. Uh, most people will have uh, asthmatic attacks in the evening at nighttime versus during the daytime. And these are just all due to hormonal and, hormonal and chemical changes in the body. But that's that internal clock that we have. And we just have it. Our dogs have it. Uh, again, you can set your watch by what our dogs do. So it's pretty fascinating. Nature just knew that. She knew that when the earth spun, it created changes in both the temperature, uh, changes in light, various intensity of the light, barometric changes, you name it. And so therefore life evolved from those cyclic changes. And when it did, it changes conditions on the earth and the animals had to be able to adapt to those condi uh, conditions on the earth, prepare for them, eat a lot of food because I'm going to hibernate, so on and so forth. And we humans did the exact same thing. But now we rely upon watches, uh, iPhones, like the one I'm recording on right now, calendars, you name it, to kind of help reset our clocks. And a lot of us, uh, because our lifestyles have changed drastically with the uh, rules and restrictions that have been put upon us because of the pandemic that we're dealing with, are really struggling uh, with what day is it and what, what time is it. And I don't normally get to do what I, I do. So what does all this mean at the end of the day? It's a lot of nice information. And if you you know, ever hear about it on Jeopardy or some just form it in the phrase of a question. But outside that, what does it really mean? Well, I pay attention to those. I honestly do, because here's why. I know when Captain wants to eat. I know when he does. I know when he's going to start bugging me. Hey, feed me. So if I, it, the training that I'm doing utilizes food, well, when do you think I'm going to do that? The best and most opportune time to use those treats is right when I know he's going to start bugging me to get fed. So it's a wonderful time. Also, I also know not to train him anywhere near 8.30 at night. He, he, he doesn't want to train anymore. He'd be very stressed out if I took him for a late evening walk or a late evening hike. He's used to going to bed at 8.30. And dogs thrive on the familiar. They have those internal clocks that just keep on rolling. They don't have these external mechanisms that we have to tell them what time it is. They simply go by the change in light, the change in temperature, environmental changes. And those only have a little bit of an effect on their clock. It still just keeps running, baby, all the time. They like savings time. It doesn't matter. But what it can matter is this. Let's say you get in your car where they finally ease up all these restrictions and everybody wants to just bust out of here and take off. Well, if you drive to another state that's about three hours different than the state that you're currently in, that could affect when your dog wants to eat. You know, they're still going to want to eat at the same time, but you're going, no, 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 I'm not going to feed you right now. It's only noon. They don't know that. They have those internal clocks. So again, to keep my dog from being stressed out, I'm going to feed him at noon. So what? Maybe you're a little bit hungry at nighttime. Don't be surprised if they get up a little earlier. They're going to do that. It's what happens. And if we can keep their routines the same when we travel, when we take them to go see our families or go see those friends we haven't been able to see, they're going to incur far less stress. And when they incur far less stress, then they won't be as reactive and they won't succumb to other conditions that could that could cause their immune system to become very deficient at that time. Or like I said, very reactive, not to put up with the niece or the good old uncle who wants to kid around with the dog. So I take all of these rhythms into account. If I've got any training that requires a lot of energy, I know when to do that training. Because it's all about, hey, making the training fun, mitigating any stressors that I, I can possibly control. And because I know that his clock He's laying over here on the bench next to me. <laughs> I know that his clock is the exact same day in and day out. I have predictive information, and you learned from before what that does for you. It gives you control. Control over his situation, control over his training, control over his stressors. That's what it does. It does a little bit for us as well. So just kind of keep in mind, you know, we have those clocks as well, and that's why you suffer from jet lag, and your, your clock just wants to keep running at a certain time. It's why we also... Uh, Again, have our strokes or heart attacks during typically certain times of the day and asthma and so on and so forth. These things just occur. It's very adaptive for animals to know this, when to hunt, when not to hunt, when to mate, when not to mate. All of this allows for preparation and control. So anyway, I hope that helped you. And uh, if anyone knows what time it is, send it my way because I'm obviously having a hard time trying to figure this thing out. Maybe my internal clock's off a little bit, cattle dog. Uh, he's, in, he's taking a nap, and that's typically what he does every afternoon. 
You guys, uh, no matter what time it is, wherever you are, be safe out there. And I'll check in with you tomorrow, whenever that is. Have a good one.